Well, I want to welcome everyone back to The Hop, and I am so excited about today's guest. And this is Kari Ann Wood with Thistlewood Farms. And I am so honored that she is here today to share about her blog, her business, and you are going to be inspired. She has been an encouragement to me already. And I am actually a part of her mastermind community. And so she has been mentoring me now for uh, really just a few weeks, but I have learned so much already and it's been such an encouragement. And I feel like I've gone from here to here just in a few short weeks, uh, just from what she's taught. And she is just such a blessing and um, a ray of sunshine. So I know you are going to learn so much from her today, whether you're interested in blogging or just decorating and um, how to um, just decorate your home. So many different things. She's going to be a great encouragement to you today. So welcome, Kari Ann. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Well, we are uh, looking forward to hearing from you today and your story and really how you uh, got started with Thistlewood Farms and your blog. But first, I really, if you don't mind, would you just share a little bit about yourself and maybe about your family, just so we can get to know you? <laughs> of course. So my name is Kari Ann Wood, and I live in McKinney, Texas, which is a suburb of Dallas. And I live here, I have four children, and a dog named Buddy, a golden retriever named <laughs> Buddy, and an amazing husband who is super, super um, great at projects and helping me with the blog. And um, the kind of a little known fact about us is that I moved back into the house that I grew up in. So the house that I'm in right now is the house that I grew up in. And um, my mom sold, when my dad very unexpectedly passed away, my mom sold it. And then we were able to buy it back from the people that she sold it to. Wow. Wow. That is so special. Yeah, so much fun. Yes. And I know right where McKinney is. I used to live in Plano. So I'm a Texas girl too. So how long oh, have you been in Texas now? So did you grow up in Texas? Yes. I grew up in Texas um, my whole life and I'm in this house actually. <laughs> and I went to high school with my husband and I'm yeah. still married to the, <laughs> my husband after all these years. Four kids later in several houses, including <laughs> this one. Actually, in super interesting news, our very first kiss was on the curb outside this house. Oh, wow. So, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That is so neat. What a neat story. <laughs> well, McKinney is a beautiful town. For those of y'all that, that don't know McKinney, it is full of just beautiful historic homes. And I can remember when we lived, when we lived in Plano, we were young marrieds and um, we, my husband was a youth pastor. And so we were renting a house in Plano. And so, you know, youth pastor, but you know, home budget. And so we were, <laughs> we would drive to McKinney and that was actually before McKinney kind of like exploded with growth. Yeah. And we would drive through the streets of McKinney and look at those old houses and just dream about living in one one day <laughs> just love well, that's, that's the area of town so we actually live in the historic district Do you? and so this house is 110 years old it was built in oh no 111 because it was built in um two, 1908 1908 wow wait wait that's older than no that's like 20 i'm not good with math 24 years <laughs> <laughs> I know well, and when you're on the spot, it makes it harder. It's old. It's, it's old. old. It's old. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, we used to, I mean, seriously, and we had some really good friends that owned one of those houses there in town, one of the Victorian style houses. And I mean, oh gosh, it was just gorgeous. And we just loved going over there. And, um, you know, here we are. And that was like, okay, my son is now 20. Okay. I'm going to get embarrassed. He's 20 five, six, and he, um, we, we bought an old historic home and it took that long. So we've been in it three years now, but you know, it dreams come, dreams can happen. That's, amazing. That's, amazing. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, so you, um, tell us about how you started Thistlewood Farms, how and why you got started with Thistlewood Farms. So, um, in, in 2000, well, in 2007, we jumped from Texas and we took our four kids and we moved to the middle of rural Kentucky. Mm 
And there we were, we were in the middle of rural Kentucky, all by ourselves. And just between us, um, I was lonely. I was, I just was looking for friends and I thought, you know what, I'm going to get online and I'm going to start a blog. Like this, that was the new thing back then to almost like an online diary. And so I started this wood farms named after the house that we were living in at the time. And really, I had no idea it was going to be a business. I didn't know anything about that. I just was looking for friends. I mean, that's where it really, it all started with me being lonely. And then about six months in, I went to a blogging conference. And at the blogging conference, there were all of these women and they were making money off of the blog. And I was like, okay, wait, this is a thing. You can make money off your blog. And I went home and I put my marketing hat on and I made my first thousand dollars that month off of the blog. And I never, that was the least I've ever made. And I never looked back from there. So that's wow. really how the blog got started. Wow. That's amazing. So you have a, ma a background in marketing? Yes. I went to Baylor and um, with my little PR communications degree yeah. um, from Baylor. And yeah, and I just use, I, I thought, what am I going to use this for? I didn't, you know, I'm like, what am I going to do with all of this? Right. And it came in really handy with a blog for sure. Right. I bet you had no idea that's how you would use it. <laughs> no, I remember in, in, in sad news, I remember meeting with my admissions or not admissions, my guidance counselor at Baylor. And she was like, Karian, now what do you want to do with your life, with your degree? And I was like, well, I want to wear a really cute suit <laughs> and I'm um, like the people on Melrose place. And I want to work in an office. That was, those were my, those were my lofty goals. <laughs> Graduating from college. Right. Right. Yes. I understand. <laughs> I remember those days for sure. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I did. I worked, I actually worked for a PR firm and I worked for, you know, several other things, but I did wear super cute suits. That is for right. sure. Well, see, you met your goals <laughs> and I bet your goals have changed a lot since then. <laughs> oh, just a tiny bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. So where, so you said Thistlewood Farms, the name came from your previous house that, um, where you started that. So it just kind of evolved um, once you came and moved back to Texas. Yes. Because that was already the name of the blog. And right. um, so we just, you know, with branding purposes, it's good usually to stick with, with dance with the one who brought you. And so yeah. I just kept it. I mostly go by Thistlewood now, but um, you know, the thistle, the URL is still thistlewoodfarms.com. Right, right. Okay. Well, and it's a, I mean, it's a wonderful, wonderful site. Um, I know we're going to talk some more about that, but so what do you love most about your business? Oh my gosh, that's such a good question. I love so much of it. I can't even, um, oh, there's so many different hats that I wear and I, love it all. I, I love my coaching group. Um, I love pouring into people um, and bloggers that are just getting started. I love that. I love seeing people grow and achieve their dreams. Like that is my heart. I love photography. I love working with brands and photographing. I love writing books. So I um, have five books that I've written. Wow. And I love that. And I love making over rooms. I mean, I love, like, I did this piece of furniture right here. I love finding thrift store. I love shopping people's trash. Like, I mean, so many things. Like, I love it all. I love every bit of it. Funny story. So this morning, um, like, the family left, find, you know, everybody left to go do their thing. And I got ready really quick and I thought, okay, I've got a few hours. I can run to the local thrift st or antique store really quick because I hadn't been there in a while. And I was looking for a bunch of rolling pins, like old, I wanted some old rolling pins because I had a specific way I wanted to put them in my kitchen and display them. And I thought, I've got just enough time before I do any <laughs> the interview and all this other stuff. I could run down and look for these. And I, I go in and I'm ready, you know, going through the store looking for, and I don't want to spend a lot on them. And I don't want any that look new. I want it old looking. And so I'm grabbing them. I've got this armful of like five rolling pins. And I go to check out, or actually while I'm walking through the store, my husband texts me and says, I don't have a key to the house. I can't get in. Where is everybody? <laughs> and I'm like, 
what? <laughs> I have to leave right now? <laughs> you know? I would have said, um, could you just sit down for a second? Because I need to buy some rolling <laughs> I'm like, I'm, and then I don't want to tell him what I'm doing either. You know how that goes. It's like, I don't want to say I'm at the thrift store buying rolling pins. <laughs> oh, love it. I go to check out and these people are looking at me like I'm nuts. Like, why are you buying all these rolling pins? You know, I'm like, I have a plan. I really have a, there's a purpose in this. So. Of course there is. Of course there is. Always a plan, always a purpose. So, well, I understand that is, that's, that's amazing. That's awesome. It's hard to pick one thing that, that you really love when you love what you're doing. Yes. And you know what? I will encourage anyone who's watching this. And if they're thinking like, oh my gosh, I wonder, could I start a blog? Could I do something online? Could, and I, I just want to tell them that the sky is the limit online. There are so many amazing ways to make money online. There are so many amazing opportunities. I mean, look at you with this incredible um, new venture that you have started. This is amazing and incredible. And like, I mean, to me, the sky is the limit. And so it's, you're only limited by your imagination. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people are nervous and they're worried, should I do it? And so I just wanted to speak into those people just a tiny bit and encourage them because it's an amazing, amazing time to be online. Right. Oh, I think so too. And, and I think that, you know, I think there are people out there that are thinking, well, I don't know anything about technology. I don't know how to do that. But there's so many different ways that you can learn how to do that now and find people to pour into you and to train you and, and, and to show you how to do those things. So, uh, it's, it's, it really is unbelievable how many tools are available to us now that weren't there before. And, um, and I love that. <laughs> so true. Okay. So how do you handle work-life balance? Because sometimes when you work from home, I, I think sometimes it's harder you know, I think that's a great question. I am a firm believer in that with my blog, I treat it like a business. From the very beginning, I always treated it like a business. So I always, I set office hours for myself and I, you know, I mean, I think the biggest challenge when you work online or even work from home is when does the work end? When are you finished? Did you do enough? There's, mm -hmm. and just between us, I mean, you know, we talk about this in the group, like, you cannot do it all. It is impossible to do it all. So you just need to release yourself from that. And you set office hours for yourself, just like a business, and you work those office hours. And then at the end of the workday, you close up shop, close your computer, close your phone, and walk away and pour into the people in your life that are truly important. And when you do that and you treat your blog like a business, something amazing happens you actually, it becomes a business instead of a hobby. And so setting office hours is key to kind of, I really believe managing everything. Right, right. Um, okay, so what has been the biggest challenge or obstacle in your business? Ooh, that is such a great question. Um, my biggest challenge in my business would be I think keeping my focus on what is working because I think the biggest thing that we encounter when you, especially when you're online, there's so many platforms. So there's blogging, there's Facebook, there's Instagram, there's um, TikTok, there's YouTube, there, I mean, there's so many things and it is impossible unless you have a staff of people, of course, but it's impossible for one person to do everything well. So I always tell people, instead of chasing what other people are doing and chasing their dream and their journey, stay in your own lane and do what is working for you. So for example, you've started doing this amazing um, interview, these amazing interviews and having guests on and doing all of this fun stuff. And here you're building traction and you're doing that well. And then all of a sudden, what if one day you go, wait, I, okay, this is great. But I think I'll start doing TikTok. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Do what you're doing and do it well. Right. And then instead of just chasing this and chasing this and chasing, because it's so easy to chase all these different things. And instead I say, pick a few things and do them very well. And you will be much more successful. Right. 
I think that's great advice. You don't wear yourself out as much then. Uh, that's right. For sure. For sure. Okay. So what has been the biggest surprise? I think how much I love it all. I think that, oh, that I've done it all these years. I mean, I've done it for eight years and I wake up every day, every day. Like this morning I got up and I thought, oh, I get to be on her podcast. I get to be on her show. Like I was so excited, like just the thrill of it and getting to meet new people and watching people grow and learning new things. And I mean, my challenge sometimes is pulling myself away because I love it so much and recognizing, okay, calm down, Cardi Anne, and balance everything because I just believe in it so much and I love it so much. And I, when I started, I didn't, I mean, I was just writing little stories. You know, I didn't know that it would turn into a business and I didn't know that I had a business woman inside of me. Like I didn't even know that. And then when she showed up, I was like, let's go, like, come on, you know? So I think that's probably my biggest surprise. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Okay. So what is, what inspires you um, where do you get your ideas from? Because I know a lot of people, um, they don't have that creativity. They don't have that, just see something that is in the thrift store or even, even with your blog or where do you, you know, the continual ideas of, I've got to have a new article. I've got to have a new this. Where do you get your ideas and your inspiration from? Well, it's so funny because I have so many ideas that I have to like whittle them down. So like, <laughs> Just today, I had an idea just today. I was actually, a reader messaged me and I have, um, oh, you can't see it, it's just off screen, but I have candle warmers. I'm a big, I love candle warmers. I have them burning all the time because the wax um, just melts and it smells so, I like, I'm big into smells. Mm -hmm. And so I, I love my workspace smelling good and mm -hmm. candle warmers are a great way to do that. Well, a reader said to me, well, how do you get your candle warmers, um, how do you get the wax out? And I was like, everybody doesn't know how to get the wax out. What? Like, well, my mom showed me this a long time ago is, or maybe my mother-in-law, I can't remember which one, but I just put the, I take the top of it off after it's cooled and I put it in the freezer and then you just go and the wax just pops right out. I thought, oh, I need to, like the world needs to know how to get their wax out of their candle warmer. So just something like that, that pops into my mind. I write it in a little notebook and keep track of everything but I get inspired by that I of course get inspired by Pinterest I get inspired just um, by stories my kids say funny things my husband says so just like as an example um, right behind these doors right here there are cork panels that I hung on the walls to this is actually a little mini organizer right here and so when you open the door there are these cork panels there and I got them at Walmart and they have these sticky things and you put them all over the back and then you stick them on the door well, there I had my cork panels and I was about to stick them on the door. And I mean, I don't measure, like it's time for, to measure. So the doors open and I'm literally about to hang them on the door. And my husband's like, <laughs> like with every fiber of his being, he could not even handle the fact that I was about to literally stick something that I could not unstick without measuring it. And I thought, and I'm laughing so hard. He had to go, he had to leave the room. He was too stressed out by my cork sticking that he could not even stay in the room because he was so worried I was going to do it wrong. And I'm fearless. I'm like, whatever, like, oh, I got this, you know what I mean? And sure enough, they turned out perfectly. And I thought, oh, that's a fun little story on just, you know, how opposites attract and how we, some people are measurers and some people aren't measurers, you know? So yeah. I ran and wrote it down in my little notebook so I could write a story about it. Uh -huh. That's great. My husband is six five, so his perspective on being able to hang things is completely different than mine. So I'm usually the one going, "Oh no!" <laughs> He's like, "No, I can see it so much better than you." <laughs> but it just works together. <laughs> I'm tall. That is tall for sure. I'm five feet tall, so that's yeah. really tall to me. I'm five. I'm five three. So we're oh, <laughs> that is a big difference. In <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is. So, <laughs> but it is funny how we, we get those, we compliment each other on those different things. So, and I'm also the one that wants to just go do whatever. I'll go paint a room. And if I don't like it, I can repaint it, you know, <laughs> that's right. 
Okay, so um, how do you stay original on your decorating? And I was writing some of these things down, but not just your ideas, but even like in your decorating, because I know we have some people that may be watching that maybe they're not bloggers or thinking about blogging, but they, you know, they love your decorating. They love um, your books and different things like that. And they're looking at it, but how do you stay current? How do you stay original um, with your decorating? I think, now my decorating has evolved over the years that is for sure so I went through my like bright phase where I had a yellow couch with flat giant flowers all over it and like red walls and like mm -hmm. okay calm down and then I went like the opposite then I had only khaki and white with black accents and then I went to blue and white and then I went to neutrals all neutrals and now I'm kind of back to the blue and white again um but I think I just do what I love. I think the secret to decorating period is to just do what makes you happy, what you respond to. So I think probably the first thing I would do if I was sitting there and I was like, I have no idea what direction. I don't even know what makes me happy, Kari, and I have no concept. I think I'd start by just going to Pinterest, looking and pinning different boards and pinning. Now, here's the secret. You're going to pin some stuff that doesn't even match. You'll be like, oh, that's bright and that's neutral and that's this and that's this. But I think the secret is you just pin what you like and then look and see what your heart kind of responds to on those pin boards. And then I would go with that and I would not follow trends. I would not do what's trending. I would, I would avoid all of that because that is sometimes it's what someone else is telling you is going to make you happy. And I'm like, you do you. So if, if you want a bright pink and orange carpet, like <laughs> let's go. And if you think, you know what? I only want all white in my house. Let's go. Like there's no right or wrong. You want, when you walk into a room, your room to make you happy. Mm -hmm. And if your room makes you happy, you have succeeded. And I think if people concentrated on what their heart, was happy with and what their heart responded to and less what other people were telling them. Sometimes I think that can kind of make you feel bad. Like you're like, well, I don't really like what they're saying, but I guess if that's on trend, maybe I should. I'm like, mm -mm, mm -mm, no. I totally agree with that. I've got, in fact, I did a blog post on that too about, uh, I think so many times we try to get caught up in what, trying to be like everybody else and we lose sight of who we are and what we love and um or we feel like we don't measure up and then we don't invite people over we don't welcome people into our homes and um and i i just think that's not what really what, what it's all about <laughs> nope not at all. all okay so and that really kind of goes into um what my next question was is that decorating is a large part of your niche and so i know that one of the questions i had on one of my videos one time was that how do you go into a store like Hobby Lobby and those other, you know, places that are just full of decor and that are all over the place, all different styles and not feel overwhelmed? And where do you begin to decorate? And especially like somebody that is trying to decorate their home on a budget, um, where do you even start and how do you, how do you not feel overwhelmed? I get it. It's so easy to get overwhelmed when you go in there because there's so many choices and there's so many things. And like, and then if you look at something like, let's say you like something and then you look at it long enough, you're like, wait, I'm not sure if I like that anymore. Like, you know, I might change my mind. Hold on. So I think for somebody that's just starting out, especially if you're on a budget, I think it's good to pick a scheme that doesn't have too many options, like a decorating scheme that doesn't have too many option, options. And by decorating scheme, I really mean color scheme. So let's say, for example, the room that I'm in right now, this room is neutrals and gray. So it's like, um, there's grays, there's a super light blue, and there's wood, okay? So once you limit it to that, sometimes it's so much easier when you go into a place because if it's not gray, if it's not blue, if it's not wood, then it's, it's not that it wouldn't work in your space. It's just a little harder to make it work. So now you already have, that's why I think the first, before I was in my yellow couch stage, I did black and white because to me, black and white was super easy because I would just go into stores and I'd find things that were black and white and I would just bring them home. And I knew that it, I was just going to layer in black and white. And then after I did that, then I got super bold and I'd be like, okay, I'm going to add an accent color. And then I'd add in like 
um, like a coral or I'd add in, you know, a, a really pretty hot pink or um, I kind of branched out a little bit from black and white with an accent color. But it was really easy for me to make decorating decisions, especially because I didn't really have any money to decorate. And I was pretty much shopping yard sales. So I would know if I went to a yard sale and I saw something that was black and white, I'd be like, oh, that'll work in my house. And it just eliminated a lot of the kind of the noise and the clutter. Right. Well, and I think too, you know, nowadays with chalk paint and things like that, you know, and I, one thing that, that I had to get away from, sometimes you can buy something new that doesn't necessarily match your colors, but it was a great price and you can paint that. And just because you bought it new doesn't mean that it's a, it's not okay to paint it, you know, yeah, exactly. so, uh, I've, I've done that a few times too, where it was a, a cute table, but it was the wrong color. And I thought, well, I like the table, but I yeah. don't like the color, so I'm going to paint it. So um, I think we or just- spray paint. Spray paint's a good friend too, because yeah. a lot of times you'll find something in the clearance aisle and you'll be like, oh gosh, it's so pretty, but it's, I'm going with all gold and it's silver. You could just spray paint it to mm -hmm. match. I mean, I have curtain rods actually in this room that I couldn't find gold curtain rods that I could afford. So I just took these curtain rods and just spray painted them. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was, it looks amazing. And it was, you know, a quarter of this, the silver rods were like a quarter of the price of the gold. So, but now they're gold. Right. Right. Well, do you have any favorite like stores, online places that you like to shop uh, that you could maybe share with people? Okay. Well, I of course love Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I shop at Walmart all the time. I mean, um, I love to shop at Walmart. I love to shop at Wayfair, of course. I think Wayfair is really good. I also love Etsy. I think you can find so many unique, beautiful home things that you um, can find that you don't, that aren't like anyone else's that you can find over on Etsy. Um, and I like to introduce a little, if I'm going to splurge on something, it's going to be on something unique that nobody else has, like a vintage piece or something like that. Right. Um, also too, I actually was shopping on eBay this morning. So I have uh, my great grandmother's China, um, and it's a pattern called Minton. It's a Minton pattern. Actually, I think it's Minton Rose is what it's called. And I was over there looking on, on eBay and I was like, I am trying to find some of this pattern so I can complete the set. So eBay is also a great place mm -hmm. to find vintage stuff or if you collect things, eBay, you can find some really good deals over on eBay too. So yeah, yeah, it is. Have you looked at replacements? Yes, yeah. I was actually, I was looking at replacements. It's a little more expensive than, um, and I, I'm kind of cheap. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. I found some, we have, I, I use scripture. Have you seen the scripture dinnerware called feed on the word? Um, oh, but it sounds amazing. Oh, I'll, I'll have to send you a picture, but I love it. My mom bought me the, just, she and I both have the full set and, um, I, I was introduced to it at a, a, a convention for pastor's wives and, uh, they had the teapots on all the tables for the centerpieces. And so I showed it to my, of course, my mom loved it. She collected teapots and, and then she found someone, we were able to, to get all of the sets and, and you can buy the sets and they'll have, it's, it's kind of a, an ivory colored dish. So it's neutral, but then around the edges of all the plates, there are different scripture verses. And, oh, I love that. And they're, they're in script and they're um, black. And so they're, they're very simple. So neutral. So neutral. neutral. Yes. And so seasonally I add, usually I'll add a salad plate to the top to the dinner plate. So I can do, a, you know, fall plate that looks really great with it. But at Christmas, um, I found, I can't remember if, I don't think it's Spode. I can't remember who, who does the plate, but it's a, it's a plate. It's a scene of a front door and it's kind of the black and red and it looks amazing with it. And I got it at Marshall's and, um, they were so, they were so cheap, you know, I was so excited and they look really, really good with these plates, but I couldn't, I didn't have enough uh, for my table and I needed like two more. And so I found them at replacements and added, finished out the set for those, but they were a little bit more than I paid at Marshall's, but it was yeah, for sure. Now, I, and the other thing too, is I don't know about you, but now that was a very specific example that you were giving, but I collect, 
um, just different things. And it's the thrill of the hunt. And sometimes when you go to replacements, it's right there. And I'm like, oh, that wasn't very, it wasn't very much of a hunt for me. And so like on eBay or yard sales, like right. um, I have these luncheon plates that I collect that are milk glass and they're old, totally old school, like luncheon with a little punch cup that sits in there. Mm -hmm. and I use them for like, I mean, I'm up to 74 of them now. So I use them for like bridal showers or baby showers, all the things that we used to do before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, before. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, um, so I'm on the hunt for those all the time. Well, I could just go someplace and buy them, but I'm like, why when I can like, sometimes I'll go to the thrift store and I'll find like one extra. I try not to pay a dollar for any more than a dollar for any of them. Wow. And so I like the, I just like the little hunt of it sometimes. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's kind of like finding the uh, rolling pins. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's a perfect example. I would have been all over those rolling. I would have been like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the man checking me out said, are you going to hit somebody with these? <laughs> no. I mean, I guess I could, but no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I totally get that. I, you know, back in the day, we used to go to Canton and um, it was, oh, I loved, we would always go back to the back fields because that's where you got all the good stuff. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's exactly where I, I have the coolest um, artwork that I found in the back field that oh, wow. was for like a, a song, like nothing. Yeah. Whereas the booths up front, they were way more expensive. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, I'll go. And there was no hunting. It was all like right there. So I like, I, I don't know. I think if you're into vintage stuff, you like the hunt. The hunt is yeah. the fun part. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And a good story and a good story to go along with it. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's exactly right. Okay. Well, so what would you like people to know as we kind of finish up? What would you like people to know about uh, your website uh, and about Thistlewood Farms? Anything that you want to share? I would love it if they would join me over there. I have um, fun stories, just like some of these stories that we've shared today. I have DIYs. I have room makeovers. I have paint colors. I have um, projects, simple, easy projects. But we really try to do everything at this look Thistlewood Farms on a budget. And we try to um, just decorate our homes and to live beautifully um, on a budget. So that's really what that's really what Thistlewood Farms is all about. And I would love it if they came, stopped over for a visit and, and told me hello. Or they can also find me on Instagram at Thistlewood, too. Um, I share things. And I share a lot of behind the scenes in stories on Instagram, too. So, I, so like, what I'll do is I'll do a whole sneak peek on Instagram stories. And then I'll show the final on the blog. So That's great. That's right. So, And you also have YouTube. Uh, so they can go see yeah. her on YouTube. So be yeah. sure to uh, subscribe to her there. So go to thistlewoodfarms.com and Instagram, Facebook, and I promise that you will not be disappointed. Sign up for her newsletter. Um, Karian is just a, a wonderful encouragement. You'll laugh, you'll cry, and you'll just get lots and lots of ideas that she shares with you. So um, I just want to say thank you again for being a part of The Hop today and sharing with us about Thistlewood Farms. I really, really appreciate it. And I know that everyone, um, I know that they've enjoyed it and have, have, are going to take away something today that they can use. <laughs> It was my absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. And I am so excited to follow along on your journey and see all of the amazing things that are just in your future. I can't wait to follow along. Thank you. I appreciate that.